Hey, how's it going? Hello, everybody. Please, everybody have a seat. Everybody have a seat. Have a seat. So, uh, what's, what's been going on while I've been gone? <laughs> I, uh, it is wonderful to be home. It is wonderful to be at the University of Chicago. It is wonderful to be on the south side of Chicago. Uh, and it is wonderful to be with these young people here. And what I want to do is just maybe speak very briefly at the top about why we're here. And then I want to spend most of uh, the time that we're together uh, hearing from these remarkable young people uh, who are, I think, representative of some amazing young people who are in the audience as well. Uh, I, I was telling these guys that it was a little over 30 years ago that I came to Chicago. Uh, I was 25 years old, and I had gotten out of college filled with idealism and absolutely certain that somehow I was going to change the world. But I had no idea how or where or what I was going to be doing. And so I worked uh, first to pay off some student loans. And then I went to work at the City Colleges of New York on their Harlem campus with some student uh, organizing. And then there were a group of churches out in the south side who had come together to try to deal with the steel plants that had closed in the area and the economic devastation that had been taking place, but also uh, the racial tensions and uh, turnover uh, that was happening in these communities. And so they had formed an organization. They hired me as what was called a community organizer. And I did not really know what that meant uh, or how to do it. But I accepted the job. And for the next three years, I, I lived right here in Hyde Park, uh, but I worked further south in communities like Roseland and Auburn Gresham and Augale Gardens and West Pullman, uh, working class neighborhoods, uh, many of which had, had changed rapidly from white to black uh, in the, the late 60s, 70s, and full of wonderful people who were proud of their communities, proud of uh, the steps they had taken to try to move into the middle class, but were also worried about their futures because uh, in some cases their kids weren't doing as well as they had. In some cases, uh, these communities had been badly neglected for a very long time. Uh, the distribution of city services were unequal. Uh, schools were underfunded. There was a lack of opportunity. And for three years, I tried to do something about it. And I am the first to acknowledge that I did not set the world on fire, uh, <laughs> nor did I transform these communities in, in any significant way, although we did some good things. Uh, but it did change me. This community gave me a lot more than I was able to give in return uh, because this community taught me that ordinary people, when working together, can do extraordinary things. Uh, this community taught me that everybody has a story to tell that is important. Uh, this experience taught me that uh, beneath the surface differences of people, that there were common hopes and common dreams and common aspirations, uh, common values that stitched us together as Americans. And so even though I after three years left for law school, the lessons that had been taught to me here as an uh, organizer are ones that stayed with me and effectively uh, gave me the, the foundation for my subsequent political career and the themes 
that I would talk about in, as a state legislator and as a U.S. Senator and ultimately uh, as President of the United States. Now, I tell you that history because on the back end now of my presidency, now that it's completed, uh, I'm spending a lot of time thinking about what is the most important thing I can do uh, for my next job. Um, and uh, what I'm convinced of is that although there are all kinds of issues that I care about and all kinds of issues that I intend to uh, work on, the single most important thing I can do is to help in any way I can prepare the next generation of leadership uh, to take up the baton uh, and to take their own crack at changing the world. Um, because the one thing that I'm absolutely convinced of is that, yes, we confront a whole range of challenges from economic inequality and lack of opportunity to uh, a criminal justice system that uh, too often is, is skewed in, in, in ways that uh, are unproductive to climate change to uh, you know, issues uh, related to violence. All those problems are serious, they're daunting, but they're not insoluble. What is preventing us from tackling them and making more progress really has to do with our politics and our civic life. It has to do with the fact that because of things like political gerrymandering, uh, our parties have moved further and further apart and it's harder and harder to find common ground. Uh, because of money and politics, special interests dominate uh, the debates in Washington in ways that don't match up with what the broad majority of Americans feel. Uh, because of changes in the media, we now have a situation in which uh, everybody's listening to people who already agree with them and are further and further reinforcing their own realities uh, to the neglect of a common reality that uh, allows us to have a healthy debate and then try to find common ground and actually move solutions forward. Uh, and so, you know, when I said in 2004 that uh, there were no red states or blue states, there are the United States of America, that was an aspirational uh, comment. But I think it's, <laughs> and, and it's one, by the way, that I still believe in the sense that when you talk to individuals one-on-one, -on -one, people, there's a lot more that people have in common than uh, divides them. 